Welcome to Movie Recap. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2012 horror mystery movie, Truth or Dare. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. College students enjoy a raging Halloween party where four friends, Paul, Chris, Gemma, and Eleanor toast to the end of their term. Paul also opens up about a wonderful internship he's landed, but his girlfriend Eleanor becomes upset at the possibility of a long-distance relationship. Luke approaches and offers Chris and Paul some drugs, and although Paul refuses at first, he ends up taking several hits. As the party continues, Felix, a meek boy, intently watches Gemma from a distance. Noticing his vulnerability, Luke comes up to him and persuades him to make a move on Gemma. But because Gemma is dating Chris, the two men know what the result will be if Felix tries to ask her out. So Luke gives Felix some drugs to boost his confidence. Felix then walks up to Gemma and asks her out, but she politely turns him down. However, she still cheers him on, saying that he'll be able to find someone who'll like him for who he is. Meanwhile, Paul and Eleanor go upstairs to make love. But before they can go any further, Paul passes out from intoxication. Dejected, Eleanor goes downstairs to start a game of truth or dare instead. The bottle spins and points at Felix, who picks truth. Eleanor then asks him who among the people in the room he'd want to spend the night with, and when he picks Gemma, Chris immediately gets mad and starts taunting him. Eleanor tells Chris that they're just joking around, but he refuses to listen. Felix tries to explain that he's just playing the game, but Chris only gets angrier and even grabs his manhood. Then Felix manages to push him back. Chris gets up and punches him. Gemma scolds Chris, but he shows no remorse. A few months later, the same group of friends get invited into Felix's birthday party. Learning that he comes from a wealthy and a prominent family, Chris drives up to the mansion with Luke, still resenting Felix, blaming him for his breakup with Gemma. On the other hand, Gemma joins Eleanor and Paul, who are also having relationship troubles. It's been a couple of days since Paul got back from his internship, but he still hasn't slept with Eleanor yet. So she feels insecure, thinking that Paul might have lost interest in her already. Moments later, they arrive at a grand dossier, but seemingly abandoned mansion. Then a groundskeeper, Woodbridge, greets them and says that the house is closed but he still directs them to where the supposed party is taking place. It's a cabin in the woods, about half a mile away from the mansion, and they have to go there on foot. When they come across a puddle, Eleanor orders Paul to carry her across because she's worried about her expensive shoes. Meanwhile, Chris takes his chance and offers to carry Gemma, too, trying to reconnect with her. When they reach the cabin, Felix's brother Justin greets them. He apologizes for the mix-up, telling them that Felix hasn't returned from Chile yet, where he's volunteering on a hospital project. As it turns out, the birthday bash was meant to be a surprise, but because Felix's flight got cancelled, Justin put off the party. However, he forgot to notify their group. After apologizing, Justin offers some food and drinks and urges them to have a party on their own. Meanwhile, Paul has already started drinking a bottle of beer. Justin opens a bottle of champagne for the group, successfully convincing them to stay. He sits with the other guys, revealing that he's in the army and has served three tours in Afghanistan. They continue making small talk until Justin observes Chris and Gemma's relationship, mentioning that she's Felix's type. Chris laughs at the comment, making Justin ask whether he thinks Gemma is too good for his brother. Justin's face also becomes unreadable as Chris mentions how Felix tried to make a move on Gemma during their Halloween party. Then when Lee comes over to offer some nitrous, Justin excuses himself and joins the two women. Eleanor and Gemma show interest in Justin because of his looks, so they both happily converse with him, even going as far as saying that they're very close friends of Felix. Eleanor even touches Justin's muscles and forces Gemma to do the same. However, she pulls on Gemma a little too hard and ends up making her spill her champagne on Justin. They apologize profusely, but saying that they will use the balloons as drugs. However, Justin states that he has a better idea. They all sit in a circle to play truth or dare, and the bottle first points at Eleanor. Chris dares her to make out with Gemma, so the two women kiss. Paul then jokes about making out with Chris, but Justin quickly dismisses the idea. 
When they spin the bottle again, it points at Gemma. Chris asks if she'll take him back, but she simply says that she won't. Then Justin spins the bottle and deliberately points it at himself. Saying that he's choosing truth, Justin confesses that Felix isn't in Chile, but he's actually hanged himself in that cabin. At first, some of them laugh in discomfort, not knowing how to react, but Justin makes it clear that he's not joking. Justin then recounts that he was in Afghanistan, and when he came back, Felix had already hanged himself, and Woodbridge cut him down. Because of their family background, they've decided to keep the incident a secret, although it's already brought shame to their name. Meanwhile, Justin doesn't hesitate to throw out homophobic slurs. When Paul asks why they're there, Justin straightforwardly tells them that he wants to know what made Felix do it. The group realizes that they've been set up, and they're also unaware that Justin has a gun. Eleanor tries to leave with Paul, but he says that he can't drive in his intoxicated state. Justin gives them a postcard that says truth or dare alongside a swear word, the same word that Chris said to Felix during the Halloween party. Justin tells them that he found it in Felix's pocket when he hanged himself concluding that it must have been the reason why he did it. Chris attempts to walk out of the door, but Justin blocks his path. Fed up, he tries to punch Justin, but the latter is a trained soldier and easily retaliates. Eleanor comes up behind him with a wine bottle, but Justin just slaps her. Paul tries to help, but Justin finally pulls out his revolver and shoots him in the leg, ignoring Gemma as she begs him not to hurt anyone. Paul then takes out his phone to call for help, so Justin expertly shoots his phone away and ends up blasting a part of his finger. Successfully asserting authority, Justin orders Luke to tie his friends to the chairs and then take their belongings. Scared of getting hurt, Luke follows Justin like a loyal henchman. Justin also instructs him to lock their things inside a box, which he follows with no complaint. Justin keeps asking about the postcard, but nobody owns up to it trying to convince him that they have nothing to do with it. He then gives them some privacy to talk about it and leaves the cabin with Luke. Outside, Justin asks Luke whether he sent the postcard, but he immediately denies it. Luke says that he's just the guy who brings the drugs and isn't even friends with Felix. He tries to persuade Justin to let things slide, but he's too upset over his brother's death. Justin then asks about the Halloween party. Knowing that Luke sold Felix, drugs to have the courage to ask Gemma out. Although Justin disapproves of his actions, he lets Luke off the hook and just asks him who he thinks sent the postcard. Meanwhile, the group just starts arguing about the postcard as well. Eleanor and Gemma think it's Chris who did it because of the words he said and because Felix was the reason why Gemma broke up with him. However, Paul believes that Chris didn't do it. Paul urges his friends to stop fighting and focus on getting out. He orders them to keep twisting their hands out of the tape and then instructs Gemma to reach the workbench behind her and look for some tools if they can use to escape. Unfortunately, Gemma's chair topples over, alerting Justin outside. When the two men get back inside, Paul tries to reason Justin to let them go, but he isn't just getting started. First, Justin spins the bottle which points at Gemma, so he asks her opinion on who sent the postcard. Then, when she says that she doesn't know, Justin slaps her. With no other choice, Gemma blames it on Chris. Because of this, everyone starts putting the blame on Chris. However, Chris manages to clear his name by pointing out that he was in Spain when the postcard was sent from London. Chaos then ensues within the group as Eleanor tries to keep pointing fingers, so Justin silences them with a warning shot and continues the game. When the bottle points at Chris, he chooses Dare, so Justin takes out the acid test. The group begs Luke for help, but he ignores their plea. Meanwhile, Justin inserts a tube down Gemma's throat that connects the two of the containers, one of which contains tap water while the other contains battery acid. Justin dares Chris to choose between the containers, but he won't give in. Justin then offers to choose for him, eliminating Gemma's 50% chance of survival because he knows which one has the acid. Eventually, Chris chooses the left container, which is luckily the correct answer. Moments later, Justin spins the bottle again, and when it points at Eleanor, she chooses truth. Justin asks her who should take the acid test next, but she says no one should take it. However, when Justin tells her 
that she's going to take the acid test. If she doesn't choose someone, she ends up going choosing Chris. Chris confesses that he sent the postcard, but Justin knows that he's lying because he was able to clear his name with an alibi. Paul then speaks up, telling Justin that none of them were friends with Felix because nobody liked him. Paul calls Felix a creep, telling Justin that he saw Felix watching them as Eleanor went down on him. He even calls Felix gay, which angers Justin, who starts saying homophobic slurs again. Justin makes Paul choose the container for Chris's acid test, but he fails to answer correctly. Everyone cries out as they watch Chris writhe in pain, blood coming out of his mouth before finally dying. Before Justin can continue the game, a knocking disrupts them. Luke's drug supplier friend, John C, has followed his GPS and asks to join the party, but he stops him. John C then gets angry, thinking that Luke is just being selfish, but when Justin gets outside to handle the situation, he starts to back away. Justin invites John Z to join him, but he refuses and uses pepper spray on him. However, Justin quickly gains the upper hand when he strikes back, breaking John Z's arm and using the pepper spray on him too. Then, as a test for Luke, Justin gives him the revolver and tells him to shoot John Z. Luke is given two choices. He can aim at John Z or he can aim at Justin. But either way, the revolver has three bullets left and he has 50% a chance of killing whoever he chooses. If John Z lives, Justin will let him go. But if Luke shoots Justin and ends up drawing a blank, he'll kill everyone. So reluctantly, Luke ends up killing John Z. Inside the cave in the group tries another shot at escaping by guiding Gemma as she swivels her chair towards the workbench. Although she topples over again, she manages to get the tool out and reach for the saw while Justin is preoccupied outside. Gemma cuts herself free and prepares to release the other two, but Eleanor just tells her to run because there's no time. Gemma does as she's told, which upsets Paul because they could have escaped already. However, Eleanor knows that with Paul's injured leg, he won't be able to run anywhere. Outside, Luke starts to break down because he just killed someone and tries to return the gun to Justin, but Justin tells him to keep the weapon because he trusts him now. Luke is scared about the consequences because Justin promises him that his powerful family will cover for them. He finally gets Luke completely on his side. Then they go back inside, dragging John C's body in. When Justin realizes that Gemma has escaped, he immediately runs to the car to track her down, leaving Luke to watch Eleanor and Paul. Gemma returns to the mansion and finds Felix, who is still alive. However, he's bedridden and almost fully paralyzed, watching the group's demise on a screen. Gemma confronts him about the cruelty, but he can't answer. Instead, Felix warns Gemma with his eyes that someone is behind her. And when she turns around, she sees a Woodbridge pointing a shotgun at her. He was the one who saved Felix, and now he takes care of him after he tried to kill himself. Unfortunately, Felix ended up getting brain damage when the oxygen got cut off from his brain. Gemma tries to run away and hides under the bed before kicking the groundskeeper. She then takes Felix as a hostage, noticing that he has a small blade taped to his finger, successfully scaring Woodbridge away. Gemma takes the shotgun and slowly leaves, but the groundskeeper is waiting to ambush her. As they get off into a scuffle, she ends up shooting the old man. She goes back to Felix and asks for a phone, so he points towards the computer. However, as Gemma tries to get help, the internet suddenly gets cut off and she realizes that Justin has caught up to her. Gemma once again tries to escape, but Justin drags her back inside Felix's room. There, Justin snaps Gemma's neck in front of Felix, who closes his eyes, refusing to see her die. Back at the cabin, Eleanor tries to convince Luke to let them go, but he's too afraid of Justin and believes that he'll actually protect him. Eleanor then realizes that Luke was the one who sent the postcard, so he explains that he did it as a joke a spur-of-the-moment decision because he was jealous of Felix's rich background. Eleanor manages to free herself and fight Luke, pushing him hard. He then ends up slipping and impaling his head on a rake, so Eleanor frees Paul and takes the gun. With no time to waste, Eleanor tries to run away with Paul, who is struggling with his wounds, but Justin returns with Felix in a wheelchair. Eleanor doesn't hesitate to shoot and manages to hit Justin in the shoulder, but as he gets closer to killing him with the last bullet, he deflects the gun and stabs her with a screwdriver. 
The two end up wrestling on the ground, but Paul comes to Eleanor's aid and stabs Justin. Eleanor then breaks the acid container on Justin's head, and moments later, he finds himself tied to a post. Meanwhile, Paul just wants to go home, but Eleanor isn't done yet. Instead, she forces Paul to get in the car, asking for some time to talk to the brothers. So Paul ends up waiting in Justin's car, where he finds Gemma's dead body. Once Paul is gone, Eleanor asks Felix to play truth or dare, as if she already knows the reason why Felix tried to kill himself. Eleanor urges him to look at the person he's most scared of. Unsurprisingly, Felix looked at his brother, and that's when Eleanor starts revealing the truth. As it turns out, because Eleanor's father was getting bankrupt, she asked Felix if his family could help them out. Eleanor then recorded herself making out with Felix, which she intended to use to blackmail him. As if that wasn't enough, she also convinced Felix to go down on Paul while he was unconscious and filmed it. Afraid of his homophobic brother might see the video, Felix ended up trying to kill himself. Now that the truth is finally revealed, Eleanor hands Felix a grenade, attaching the pin to his finger. She then walks away from the cabin and gets in their car as Felix succeeds in blowing themselves up. With tears in her eyes, Eleanor drives away with Paul and Gemma's dead body. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.